Welcome to Monkey Box Craft. I'm Debra and I make videos about gardening, crafting, upcycling, recipes, home brewing and occasionally travel vlogs. So if any of that interests you, hit the subscribe button and check out some more of my videos. But today I wanted to share with you what I grow in my raised beds, what I'm direct sowing and a little bit about the fruit trees I've got growing in my garden. I like to start a lot of my veg in the greenhouse and propagators until it grows into something I want to plant in my raised beds. But I do grow a lot of it by direct sowing straight into the raised beds. Because our weather is so temperamental, I do like to wait to sow or direct plant, usually till mid to late May. Every time I try to grow sooner, I lose a lot with the frosts. In my first raised bed, I've got French green beans, and some lettuce, variety little gem. I started both these in the greenhouse as successional veg, and I will just plant more of them as the season continues. Next to that, I've got some set onions, variety Stuttgarter. So I like to sow these using some plastic chunky chicken wire to use as a guide. I prepare the soil by using some plant food granules, mix that in, then I place the chicken wire on top. Then using these metal pegs, I just peg it down in place. And then using the handle of a trowel or a fork, I just make divots into the soil in every second hole. It just makes it easier to pop in the set onions. And then just pop a set onion into each divot. Just remember to put them in the right way around. This is the top of the onion, this is the bottom where the root will grow. So just make sure you've got the root at the bottom when you pop them in. I'm going to be growing all my tatties from food base this year. These tatties were just lying at the bottom of my fridge, looking pretty sorry for themselves, going a bit minging to be honest. So I thought, why not use them? Seed tatties are so expensive, and this is such a cheap, well, kind of free, because they're going to waste anyway method. A much cheaper alternative if you can't afford seed tatties. And when I've tried it in the past, it seems to work fine. The area for the tatties is about a metre squared. I know I'm probably cramming in too many, but the more the merrier, right? So I think I've used 16 tatties, spread them out into the positions I wanted to plant them in, and then just dug them in, covered them over. And as they grow, I will just heap more compost on top and hopefully I'll get nice tatties. In my second raised bed at the top, I've got asparagus. This will be the third year of growing asparagus. So I started this off three years ago in a planter in the greenhouse, left it to grow completely. Then the start of last year, I popped it into the raised bed. So that'll be its permanent position. And I didn't cut any asparagus last year either. I've just left them to grow, left them to die over winter. So I can cut them back early spring this year. So this year I should get my first crop of asparagus and I'm only going to harvest about a third of them and let the rest go to seed. And next to the asparagus, I've got beetroot. Variety Baltery. I can never say that word properly. Balterary, Balterary. Hopefully you can read the packet there, even if I can't pronounce it. After adding some plant food and preparing the soil, I've used this length of wood to press into the soil about 10 to 15 centimetres apart to make divots for my seeds to go into. I just sprinkle the beetroot seeds along these lengths or divots that I've made with the wood, covered over with soil, and then place some mesh over the top just to protect it. I've got cats that come into my garden and want to sit on my raised beds, and I don't want my seeds to be squished. I also don't want the cats to poop in my beetroot. <laughs> when the beetroot seedlings start growing, I'll remove the mesh and thin them out. Next to the beetroot, I planted my spring onions. Variety White Lisbon. I think these are actually a winter variety, but they were selling them off cheap, so I thought I'd plant them anyway. They're part of my successional veg. I'll be growing more as the season goes on. To plant them, I just use a bamboo cane as a guide. Pop in the little seedlings about five centimetres apart and repeat until I've used all the seedlings. The rest of the second bed has been left empty. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to put in there yet. Maybe broccoli, maybe lettuce. I do have some trays of set onions. So after planting up my set onions, I had quite a few left over that I thought didn't look like they were going to grow. So I popped them in these trays. However, lots of them seem to have grown, so I will have to get them planted up. I also might be planting some broccoli in there. I've sown it the same way as most other things in the greenhouse, tray compost, 
plant food, granulated, sprinkle the seeds in, compost, water in, leave to grow, and I'll pick out the strongest seedlings to transplant into there later on. At the bottom of each race bed, I also have these black planters, and I've got nothing planted in these yet. Although I do have dahlia tubers in them that I didn't lift last year. I'm not sure if they're going to survive or not though. Dahlias do not like the frost, so if they survived, I'll be delighted. And if they haven't, I won't be surprised. In my third raised bed, I've got some peas. Variety green horse shaft, and next to them is the carrots. So the first variety I've got is red sun. I prep the bed the same way as I did the beetroot, using this bit of wood just to make divots about every 10 centimetres or so. Sprinkle in the seeds, covered with soil, and separated each row using bamboo canes. I also like to secure them in place using a metal peg so they don't move around. It means the cats can't dig up the soil and poop in it. However, I have put some mesh over the top as well, because again, they like sitting there. My second variety is Amsterdam Forcing 3. <laughs> So in exactly the same way. And finally, I've got some seed safe carrots to try. So I grew these carrots, not last year, the year before. So you grow your carrot, and then when you're harvesting, don't pull them all up, leave a few in the ground. So then the following year, they'll grow up into carrot flowers and you'll get these huge plumes of flower heads. Now leave these to die back and as they do, they will just close in on themselves. That's when you want to pick them. So I like to keep mine in a cardboard box over winter to dry out. And much the same way as I release most of the other seeds. Put them in a the Tupperware. Shake like heck. Release the seeds. Hopefully we should be able to grow lots of carrots for free. So I'm going to sow them exactly the same way as I've sown the rest of my carrot seedlings. Then I've got a small space that nothing's growing in yet. And down at the bottom, I've got some more tatties I'm growing from food waste. It's a week or two later, I had to stop filming. <laughs> but here we are. After I got the seed saved carrots planted or sown, I decided that in the space between the tatties and the carrots, instead of planting up the broccoli, because it does get quite big, I've planted up the Brussels sprouts, variety red ball. I've only got four of them. <laughs> So I hope they're going to be okay. They seem to be doing quite well at the moment. So that is that third bed complete. And back in the second bed where I had the space at the end, I decided to put in the rest of the set on the ends. And next to them I've popped in my courgettes. 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 They seem to be growing on quite nicely too. I have found over the years that you really don't need mini courgette plants. One or two courgette plants is more than enough to keep the average family going, I would say, unless you eat them by the absolute abundance. Four plants is probably far too much for me and Andy, but I do like to make a courgette chutney, which my dad loves. I will use any excess courgettes for making that later in the year. And then onto these black planters at the bottom of the raised beds. As my seed saved pumpkins are growing on really well, I thought I'd plant them there. In this first planter, I've put the mini white ghost pumpkins. In the middle planter, I've done half crown prince pumpkin. And the other side is a striped yellow and green pumpkins. Still not really sure which variety they are. And in the last planter up here, I've got the mini orange pumpkins. Dug a hole, threw in some plant food, planted them up and watered them in. The three things I find most important about moving plants from the greenhouse into my raised beds is number one, make sure the last frost is passed and the weather is good enough for planting out because if not, they will most likely die. Number two, add plant food. They need a good start and a good bit of nutrition will help that. And number three, probably the most important part <laughs> is make sure you water them in properly and then continuously water for a good week or two. Most things seem to be doing okay 
The mini ghost white pumpkins, relatively fine, apart from the cat sitting on and breaking a few, so I've lost one or two they are. The middle planter with the crown prince pumpkins and the striped yellow and green pumpkins, they're doing brilliantly. I think they're all growing on really well. Unfortunately, at the end planter down there with the mini orange pumpkins, yeah, they're not quite so happy. And I'm not quite sure if it's because I maybe planted them out a little bit too quickly or the cat, my resident stray cat, has decided to go and dig them or poop on them or lie on them because they do seem quite broken. The extra set onions are growing up lovely. The courgettes seem really happy, delighted. Now the raised beds are fully planted up and there is no more space anywhere. I thought I would answer a few questions I've gotten about these raised beds. We've had them now for about five years. I did not build them. One of our friends, EJ, he built them for us. He does a lot of handiwork. He's brilliant. So I can't tell you too much about the construction, unfortunately, but they are about two foot deep. They've got three layers of sleepers all bolted into place and then lined with a really heavy duty liner and stapled into place just to protect the wood in the inside and to fill them up <laughs> we use actually quite a lot of soil from the garden when we replace the lawn just to bulk it up a bit unfortunately i ordered the wrong compost i ordered topsoil instead of compost because back then i didn't have a clue that there was any difference <laughs> I've been dealing with that mistake ever since. If you're doing something similar, make sure you get a really good quality compost to put in your raised bed. It will save you a lot of aggro in the long run. Unfortunately for me, I ordered topsoil, which turns out is what you want to be putting under your paving slabs or paving areas, pathways, not for growing in. But you know, you live in Laren. I was planning to try and change out some of my soil because it's really clay based. However, clay-based soil is actually quite nutritious and it's also quite expensive to change out your soil. So I have decided to persevere, much like that seagull. I've decided to persevere and just continue to mix in organic materials and homemade compost and hopefully using lots and lots of sawdust that we collect from the wood we cut from our fire. I'm hoping that will help in years to come. I've been doing it already for quite a few years. Um, it is slowly getting better, but it's just so time consuming. Another advantage of raised beds is we don't have to deal with carrot fly. They tend to only fly about two foot up. And because my raised beds are two foot high, I've never had problems with carrot fly. So that's another bonus. Yeah, it's also quite good to be able to sit on a little chair and be able to work in the beds. So it's better for my back. And of course, every year I do varnish and paint the outside of the beds just to help them stop rotting, deterioration, just keep them as good for as long as possible. Maintenance, I guess. Someone did ask me if I was going to paint them. And uh, do you know, I hadn't really thought about it because they're made out of sleepers. I really like the way they look. But I suspect eventually I probably will paint them a fun color because everything else in my garden is painted a bright fun colour. Once all the plants grow up a little bit and I don't have to worry about the cats digging and doing their business, I like to use that chunky mesh wire, stake it with bamboo canes and separate my vegetables because as a lot of things grow, they tend to sort of flop over onto other things. And I find it a really useful way to separate things and give everything a little bit of support where it's needed. So you can kind of see I've done that with a lot of the chunky chicken wire now. Same as the bamboo. As everything grows up, I will just remove the bamboo and the pegs and just let everything grow. So that's everything I think I wanted to tell you about the raised beds. If you've got any other questions though, pop them in the comments below and I shall do my best to answer them. Now we're on to the rest of the garden, or more specifically, the fruit and fruit trees I've got growing. I'm gonna start off with the small fruit plants and work up to the larger trees. I grew on loads of strawberry runners last year, which is in little pots below all my planters, because a lot of my strawberry plants need replacing. They're pretty old. I've had them for more than three years, definitely more than three years. They weren't growing as well and producing as much fruit. So I was going to do an upcycle project and create a ladder using some old drain pipes. However, I've ended up repotting up all my strawberries and replacing all the old plants with the new ones. So that project's gonna to have to wait until next year. I've also got rid of the smallest pots that I had strawberries in. They were like little pots with handles that hooked over my deck and banister. I find them really difficult to keep watered in the summer. And I've replaced them with slightly bigger pots and planters that's got a sort of reservoir in the bottom of them. So hopefully 
it'll be easier to keep them watered and fed over summer. And in this house, we really like berries. So we've got quite a few berry bushes dotted around the garden, starting from the stairs up here and working my way into the garden. Top of the first raised bed, we've got a raspberry. Then down here at the side of the archway, we've got a red currant and a raspberry. Behind me, I've got a Japanese wine berry, which is basically a really sweet bramble. Absolutely delicious. Down at the bottom near our shed is a black currant, which I'm not super keen on. They're a bit too shilpit for me personally, but hey ho. I'd really love to grow more raspberries. I have been trying to propagate them this year by cutting off little branches and trying to grow them on. We will wait to see if that is successful or not. The red currants, if I'm really honest with you, are a bit of a pain. Every year I think we've got caterpillars and every year it turns into soft fly. I really must remember to treat them before they get absolutely demolished by those little critters. The Japanese wine berry, however, is amazing. It's such a sweet fruit, I would love to grow more of it. It always throws out these extra vines and I mostly cut them back. However, this year I have not. So it's decided to grow in a few different areas and I'm going to let it because I really want be able to make jam from it or just eat them. Usually they make it nowhere near to our kitchen because I eat them so quickly but that's all right. And because I have now a bit of a gap here as that's kind of spreading away I've decided to plant another raspberry. Patio raspberry little sweet sister. I shall get that planted up into an area down here soon enough. A lot of the reason I really like the berry bushes and the fruit trees is because they grow back every year once they're planted, that's it. As long as you're feeding them, cutting them back so they don't get out of control. You're gonna have fruit for years to come. I've also found this amazing sort of berry picker. So instead of taking hours to pick everything, you just scoop it in and little prongs pick out all the berries. So it's such a quick way to harvest all the berries. And what we don't eat, I'm gonna freeze and hopefully later in the year, attempt making jam again. I've also got two blueberry bushes. Now, unfortunately, they don't grow particularly well in my garden because they're acidic soil loving plants and my garden is quite alkaline so I do try to use a citric feed on them however I've never had too much success so maybe I need to be a little bit more on it when it comes to the feed you know also this plant down here has been attacked quite badly it was growing beautifully it was looking wonderful <laughs> i have a horrible suspicion that the slugs and snails are having a full-on party in the middle of the night and when it's dark and eating it might be a get the head torch on type of idea and come out in the dark and try and sort that out maybe relocate them to a different area so they can't eat all my plants. I also have a small patch of rhubarb, although they always seem to want to throw up a flower these last few years. So you do have to remember to chop off that flower head as soon as possible. So the energy goes back into producing rhubarb instead of producing a flower. I think that leaves us with the olive tree and the fruit trees. Apparently to qualify as having an orchard in your garden, you need seven fruit trees. So <laughs> I have an olive tree. <laughs> I'm not sure if the olive counts. An entwined pear tree, so is that technically two trees? Another pear tree behind me, a conference pear. We've got an apple tree here, I think that one's Bramwell, five. And then the corner of the garden, I've got a gala apple tree, six. And I also have a cherry tree, which does produce cherries. Does that mean I've got an orchard? I'm not quite sure the olive tree counts, or the entwined pear tree, I think that's maybe just one, but. Maybe I can say I've got an orchard. I had the olive tree in a pot for quite a few years. And after a while of moving it around the garden, I decided to plant it in here. This is one of the sunniest spots in the garden, especially later on in the day. It's a very hardy plant. Although the olive seems really happy there, it never produces fabulous olives. They're just teeny tiny. So ideally, I probably should have planted that in the greenhouse or a lean-to or a purple house. But I haven't and it's too late so I guess we will wait and see if it ever does anything. If not, I do love it because it's an evergreen and it looks really pretty. The two pear trees we have, one behind me which is conference pear, we've had that planted now for a good five years I think. So it does produce quite a few pears now. And what I've learned over the years is when you cut it back quite brutally, it then usually spends the next year throwing out lots of greenery instead of fruit. 
So, little heads up for you if you're growing your own pears. Our other pear tree is an entwined pear tree, which one of our friends gifted us for engagement. I'd kept that in a pot until the end of last year because we were getting the shed rebuilt. I didn't want it to get damaged with the workmen walking past it or over it. So that is finally coming to life. I'm not sure how big it's going to get. I don't know much about it. Yeah, I don't know if it's just a wee patio variety. The two apple trees we have, I think it's Rayburn, not Bramwell. Rayburn apples, which are good for eating, cider and cooking. However, they're not my favourite apples. <laughs> I decided to get a gala apple tree, which is my favourite. So I accidentally, well, it wasn't really an accident. I purposely went and got one to plant at the bottom of the garden. So this will be the third season of the gala apple tree. It's growing reasonably okay at the moment. With the fruit trees, they do need a bit of maintenance. So if they've got any branches that kind of grow crisscrossed or quite close together and they rub in the wind, I like to get rid of one of those branches so you don't get damaged to the fruit in the growing season. I like to cut them in the off season and cut the branches as close to the trunk as possible because if not, as I've discovered, you get stress growth. And that's when you leave just enough the branch that then puts out your shoots, which is stress growth. And I don't want that. So going forward, I shall be making sure I do it properly. And moving on to the cherry tree. That's probably the biggest fruit tree we have in our garden. It has grown wildly big, really fast. They were planted at the same time as the pear and the apple and it's about twice the size. Mostly I think because that's where I've got the compost. So it's getting lots of feed constantly throughout the year. At the end of this summer, we will be chopping that back massively. What our plan is, is when you've got a main branch growing up and three, say three or four branches grown off that, we want to cut off the bigger branches and let the smaller branch take over as the main branch. But I must remember, the branch I leave has to be a third or more of the size of the big branch I'm taking off. And that way, the small branch will take over as the lead branch and grow unhealthily, but still reduce the size of the tree so it doesn't go into shock and it doesn't look over pruned. Kind of want them to look natural as we grow, you know. I don't want just to like lob off the top and then that be it. Hopefully that made sense. We also have a bay tree, which I've never actually used it in cooking before, but I really should. They're evergreen, so they're beautiful in the garden, but they can get quite tall. My one doesn't seem to be growing very fast, so I'm not worried about it at the moment, but in time, I will make sure I cut it back. And back in the greenhouse, I have a few exciting plans. So firstly, I've got a fig tree. The variety is Lucky Berry, so it's a patio collection and apparently only grows to 100 centimetres high and 100 centimetres wide, which could take up quite a lot of this space. Because the avocado has died a sad death, I've decided to replace it with this. And I might have gone a little bit nuts, but I've also ordered a lime tree and a kiwi plant. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm really excited to try it. And that really came about because behind me is the passion fruit. I don't know if it's ever going to produce passion fruit, but it has produced some gorgeous flowers this year for the first time. Well, actually, maybe not the first time. I had it in a pot for quite a few years. It grew one flower one time, one year, and was root bound ever since. So last year I placed it in the ground and it is fully taken over that area which I'm delighted about. The flowers are wild. I've also been dusting the flowers with this little makeup brush in the hopes of pollination. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. The grapevine down here is also doing really well. So soon I will be putting up a wire frame just as a support to help it grow out into the greenhouse. And just in case you're wondering, the purple fingered lime I got from the Beech Grove team last year is down here over winter left it outside, which I shouldn't have. I should have taken it in the greenhouse. I thought it had died a death, if I'm honest. So I've taken it back into the greenhouse, into the warm, given it lots of feed, given it a really good prune back, and it's started growing. So that will be its new permanent position in the greenhouse. So I'm looking forward to the lime and the kiwi arriving and getting the fig planted up in here. And I shall keep you posted on how that goes and how they grow. But now, I'm away to thin out the carrots and the beetroot because they've grown quite a lot. So if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. 
Of course, subscribing is optional, but it is very much appreciated. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. friendly neighborhood cat. Hello? You come to view my videos? What is it? Do you want to be friends or not? Don't know if he wants to be friends or just get food, I don't know. <laughs>